The Illinois Policy Institute is lying to you. Sorry, I'm not supposed to say lying. I'm supposed to say uh, presenting mistruths or repeating inaccuracies, something that doesn't assign direct blame. But in my defense, PolitiFact called this out as false back when Bruce Rauner first trotted out these talking points on the campaign trail for governor. And if you are continuing to repeat something that you know isn't true, what am I supposed to call that? Here's some very quick backstory in case you haven't been watching our other videos in this series and how dare you. Freshly minted governor J.B. Pritzker wants to switch the state from a flat income tax to a graduated income tax. This requires changing basically the one sentence in our state constitution that locks us in to a flat tax system. Flat income taxes are fantastic if you're a libertarian who never wants the state to raise revenue through taxes. Illinois' flat income tax is currently 4.95%. If you're making over a million dollars a year, you could easily afford to pay an extra 2 or 3% without seeing any effect on your quality of life. You're still taking home well over $900,000 a year. But if you are making $30,000 a year, that extra 2 or 3% is a month of rent, it's a couple of car payments, and you are already living paycheck to paycheck. So by making both of those people pay the same rate, you effectively prevent politicians from ever raising taxes on the highest earners without punishing the vast majority of the population. So that's why Governor J.B. Pritzker and a long line of progressives before him have been pushing to unlink those rates by switching the state to a graduated tax system. But the IPI, which was founded to promote libertarian anti-tax ideas, absolutely hates this. In the beginning, Democrats were working on just getting this ball rolling to change the Constitution to allow for a graduated tax, but they hadn't introduced the actual numbers, the brackets that would make up the graduated tax system. So the IPI, when reporting on this, basically made up what they thought those numbers might be. And somehow, they always seemed to show that a massive tax increase was coming for the middle class in Illinois. For weeks they played this game, running article after article saying that if we use Pritzker's model of Wisconsin and just drop their tax on Illinois, well then all the middle class would be stuck paying a higher tax rate. Even though JB specifically said he was not using Wisconsin as a model. We can accomplish this in Illinois with a more competitive rate structure than Wisconsin and Iowa. And sure enough, this all should have ended on March 7th which is when the governor's team finally announced their proposed brackets. And shockingly, it included tax cuts for 97.3% of the people living in Illinois. And it would raise over $3 billion a year in additional revenue, all while keeping the top bracket on income earned over a million dollars at 7.95%, which is significantly lower than a lot of states, including Minnesota, California, and New York. But I gotta hand it to them, the IPI is sticking to their guns. Less than four hours after JB announced his rates, the IPI released an article claiming that according to their hasty research, JB's plan wouldn't raise the $3.4 billion he had claimed, instead it would only raise a little over a billion dollars. And somehow, therefore, JB was actually planning on more than doubling taxes on the middle class. Even though literally nobody had proposed that, except now the IPI. <laughs> okay, but who is right on the numbers? Well, Pritzker's estimates are a little rosier than analysis that came up by the Center for Tax and Budget Accountability and was backed up by the Illinois Economic Policy Institute. No relation. But his plan is also more aggressive than they were expecting, so that could add up. On the other hand, the IPI's lowball estimate, their $1 billion, uses what's called dynamic scoring, which was developed by the Tax Foundation, a conservative think tank associate, to use the assumptions of trickle-down economics in their tax models. So as far as I can tell, that number is pulled straight out of their ass. Association of like-minded conservative friends. But here's where I start to go really crazy. Because the IPI, if you believe their numbers, is tacitly admitting that this tax plan would still raise revenue and cut taxes. They'll just never put that in a headline. Instead, they're gonna keep playing this apples to oranges game where they now are comparing us to Connecticut, saying, oh God, we're gonna wind up with their economic problems and their losing population, even though our economy is actually a lot more similar to New York and California. But 
Heaven forbid they make the California comparison and accidentally suggest that we could wind up with a budget surplus at the end of this. Yeah. If it is this easy to poke holes in their argument, why are they still running with this? Well, that's because the final step in this process is a vote. In November of 2020, you are gonna get the final say on whether or not Illinois switches to a graduated income tax. And until then, try to keep a skeptical eye on the IPI. If you wanna see how the Democrats' tax proposal would affect your taxes, take a look at their online calculator and see what you think.